Hello friends, welcome to, we think episode like 34. Um, it's pretty exciting. Thank you so much for sticking with us. And while we're at that, um, if you like and, and are enjoying the videos, please just give me a thumbs up. Be sure and subscribe, hit the little bell icon so that you'll be notified when we do more videos. Uh, my name is Mark, I'm the owner here at Creative Occasions and it's a pleasure to have you in my workroom. Uh, we all have tons of utility glassware, right? Um, it's just sitting around the house, available readily, retail. Um, but sometimes you want something a little bit more. You want something that's just a little more unique. And you may have seen this technique before, and if so, I apologize to repeat, but I promise you, you're gonna see some things here that you haven't seen done quite this way before. Simple rubber band we're gonna take and put around this glass vase. I did double this rubber band because it's a little bit large for this size vase. So I wanted it to be tight so that it's, you know, holding in place what we're doing. We're going to, we're kind of ending the school year here. So we're gonna do an end of school nod to a fresh arrangement that you might, you know, wanna be able to do for your child's teacher or something. So we're gonna use pencils and basically you pop the rubber bands away from the vase and you just stick the pencils down in there and you keep adding pencils and keep adding pencils. And if you're really OCD like I am, you can turn the pencils so that you can see all the number twos on the outside of them. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but there it is. So anyway, that's it. You literally just keep adding, adding, adding as you go around until you have completely covered the vase. And this is what you're gonna end up with. Now, I didn't like the look of the rubber bands. So I took, again, going back to my hardware store, um, products, red electrical tape, and just put a band of red electrical tape right over the rubber band so you don't see the rubber band, okay? Everything's nice and secure, held in place, but it's also decorative. Um, favorite mechanic, at least one of the top three favorite mechanics, little bundle of greenery. We're just gonna get it pre-done, ready to go, give it a fresh cut and pop it right in the water. There we go. And, you know, sunflowers just seemed like the right flower for this. Gonna give this a little bit of height. And really, I've only got five sunflowers, so we're gonna make that work. Um, if you had something else you wanted to put in there with it, you sure could, or add more of them, I think that would be fine as well. Um, let's see, let's do sticks. You know how I love sticks, right? So we're gonna add a couple of those just for some added height, just cause Jason loves it when I do things that are up in that camera up there. And I'll tell you something else that you could do with this. I noticed just now that that stick kind of was spinning around a little bit. So I'm gonna shorten it first of all, but if it needs more density in the mechanic part of this, then you could add a little bit more greenery to make it more stable. Um, I think the shorter height of that worked good. And also the placement in that little kind of adjacent and that little bundle inside worked well. Um, and you know, you can always use these too for a little extra texture. It's so funny. I'm in such a habit of cutting material with a fresh cut when it goes in water that even when I'm using something dried, I still do that. I still give it a fresh cut on the bottom. All right, I've got one stem of red hypericum left over from another project. So I'm gonna pop that here in the front. I'm gonna spin it around. See, Jason, I'm almost done. I told you this was gonna be quick, okay? Ta-da! There we go, quick and easy, fun little arrangement. And really the thing that makes it fun is it's not the design. The design is, you know, nice, it's fun enough. 
but the fun element is the container. So I want to show you a couple of others that I prepped today, uh, because once I got started on this, I really just couldn't stop, you know. Um, so think about any other things that you could potentially use in that scenario, like this one. Those are the little foam brushes that came from the dollar store that you'd use for arts and crafts projects for painting. Okay, and literally I just turned them up and down, up and down, kind of alternating, just honestly like they came out of the package. I didn't even bother to cover the rubber band in this case because the rubber band blends beautifully with the color of the little wooden handle of the brush. So for me, that was great. And then the arrangement colors kind of mimic those colors. Whites, a little bit of black in the center of the Gerber daisies, a little dark burgundy. Thought that might be kind of an interesting and fun arrangement. Um, yeah, this one, Jason looked at me and he said, asparagus? This is the one that I think that you may have seen. Um, asparagus has been done before in this kind of scenario. Um, I'm completely comfortable with having those little spaces in there where you can see into the glass vase just a little bit. I don't find that offensive at all. If you do mind that, you could easily tuck in some moss or something in those little spaces just to kind of soften it and hide the fact that there's a glass vase in there. Um, this is also awesome, absolutely awesome at Easter time with carrots. So you cover the vase with carrots, then you do a fun arrangement in bright Easter colors. It's terrific. And since we're moving in on June, I thought it might be kind of fun to do an arrangement for dad for Father's Day. So what dad doesn't like candy, right? So basically we just took the small packages of those little fun size candy bars, laid them around this vase, again, inside the rubber band so that they're held nice and secure. I do have ribbon that's over top of the rubber band in both of these arrangements, just to kind of give it a little more decorative oomph. Um, and then just made a nice low compact arrangement of the sunflowers and, and roses. Um, Honestly, the sky's the limit in terms of what you can think of to do with this application. Start playing with it. Christmas, peppermint sticks, candy canes are perfect. We've seen that done a lot before too. Um, you can take the leftover ends of these wood sticks, or if you're using a dried material and you have these sort of reeds that are left over, like the ends of cattails or something, that would be an amazing product to use to wrap a vase with. Um, I did notice when I was doing the asparagus that because of the tips of the asparagus being a little more open and at the top of that, that almost again works for another mechanic. So when you're putting the flowers in place, you kind of go through the stems of the asparagus. Um, I promise you'll have a lot of fun with this. Just, you know, go to the hardware store, go to the dollar store, wander around, just, you know, kind of let your mind wander about things that could be fun to wrap a vase with um, as a nod to somebody that you know or love. Colored pencils, other paint brushes, just have fun with it. Another element of fun, of course, is tasting bourbon. So let's get right to that. Um, this bourbon, again, was brought to me by my friend Kim from Tennessee, who's working in this area. Um, it is George Dickel's Bourbon Whiskey. This is an eight year bourbon. Um, I'm pretty excited about this. Kim, you're so awesome. Thank you so much for being a fan of Blossoms and Bourbon. Thank you so much for being a customer of Creative Occasions and for bringing me this bourbon. Um, I don't feel like we have to say much about George Dickel because it's a company that is very well known. They have a great history of making great products. Um, this is an 84% uh, corn mash bill. So that's what pushes it into the category of being bourbon um, as compared to whiskey. And also the fact that it is aged in those new American charred oak barrels. Um, so great color. You know how I love me that caramel color in there and it's beautiful. Yeah, again, nice color. It's a little vanilla. Some other fruit. There's a little bit, just a little bit of a harsh element to it. Definitely like a cherry flavor in there.
maybe orange. Maybe that's more orange than cherry. Um, and Jason and I were discussing before we started uh, filming tonight, and we were talking about how just a little bit of water will open up the flavors of bourbon. So not too much, a couple of drops. And at Bourbon Tastings in Kentucky, um, I remember at one distillery in particular, they provided us with little bottles with eyedroppers with water that we could add to our pours before we tasted them. So let's see how this makes us different. That is amazing. We talked about that. It just changes the profile so much. The harshness seems to go away. Just that little bit of a more open um, sense about the flavors. Definitely kind of, um, yeah, I can I definitely get that orange more now. And this one finishes kind of mid mid tongue for me, which is really a, a nice sweet spot for when I'm tasting. Um, George Dickel, bourbon whiskey, eight year. Um, Kim, thank you so much. This is great. The next time you're in the store, we'll have to share a pour. Um, friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. I want you to be able to try this technique, post a picture so we can see what you're doing and try George Dickel bourbon whiskey. And until next time, cheers to you and to flowers every day.